In that special place, in that special place, Lord, we are united. We've come to praise you. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I want to say welcome to everyone that has joined us live stream here at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. Thank you so much for joining us today for a great time in the Lord. I really believe that the Lord is going to do great things on this marvelous, wonderful day that He has created. It's a great day to be living for the Lord. It's a great time to be serving the Lord. Amen. In spite of everything that's going on around us, we know that everything is well. All is well. We stand in faith firmly upon the Word of God. And He tells us He's with us. And if the Lord be for us, who can be against us? Praise God. I want to ask everyone, if you would, to please go to that share button 
on your phone, your iPhone or laptop or computer, whatever you might be watching through. If you are on Facebook Live, if you you don't mind, share uh, right now so the message will travel further and it will touch places that perhaps we will never reach or get to. And we want to all do our part to be a blessing for the Lord to use all of us and use these these tools that he has put into our hands. Amen. That we may be a blessing to the kingdom of the Lord. Again, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. You'll see the praise team behind me. They have shirts on that says reach that represents our global missions vision, our global missions conference that we we have every year and uh, the first weekend of every month it's a weekend that we we set aside that just for a few moments we want to bring everybody's attention to thinking about global missions and being a support being a blessing to our missionaries helping to build churches all over the world and be a blessing to people that are outside of the boundaries of of our nation and we want to be a part of that and I'm so thankful that that this is a missions giving church I rejoice that they have received the heartbeat of global missions and I thank God for each and every one of you but just want to remind you today amen to be thinking about the missions and don't forget to to give in the the global mission support and be a blessing Amen to missionaries all over the world. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord right now in prayer. You will see the needs that are there before you on the screen. People that really need a touch of God. There are people in your lives. You know they need a miracle or they need a financial miracle. We believe in prayer. I believe I would not do this if I did not believe and have total faith that the Lord hears our cry and attends unto our prayer. And so we're bringing these needs before you. Please pray for these that you see on your screen, but those people around you, people that you know, family, friends, let's bind together and let's speak with authority and power in the name of Jesus right now. Let's do that. Lord, we love you and praise you. Lord God, I pray right now that there be a special blessing That today, Lord God, there would be divine intervention that's going to come into the lives of those people that need healing in their bodies. For I know you are the healer. I know that you are the physician. I know that your word is the highest of all words. Your law is the highest of all laws. It's above all of the laws of medicine and all of the laws of that we understand. For Lord God, we stand upon your word and in Jesus' name we speak healing to the sick. We speak healing unto their bodies. We command them with authority of the name of Jesus to rise up out of their depression. Rise up out of their discouragements. Rise up out of the place of their worries and place of their fears. And I pray for comfort to those, Lord God, that have lost their loved ones. Uh, Comfort those family, Lord God. We pray uh, for Leslie Salinas' family that comfort would come upon that family today. I pray, Lord, for strength to come upon the hearts of all of the people as we rise by you, Lord God. You are the lifter. You lift us all up. You bring us, Lord God, to those heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we give you praise. Will you put your hands together with me right now? And I want you just to feel the atmosphere there wherever you are. It might be in a house. May be outside, may be in a park, may be in a car. But feel that atmosphere, feel that place with praise unto the only true King, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. He is our God. He is our physician. He is our heavenly Father. He's the wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. He is our help. He is our life. He is our strength. We praise you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. 
we rejoice in that glory ah we praise you lord god we push ourselves aside on this day on this day lord for you said no flesh of glory in your presence and today lord we humble ourselves before you and you said if we humble ourselves before you you will lift us up hallelujah lord and we rejoice in knowing that we are being lifted up by your mighty glorious power today in the name of jesus praise god praise god hallelujah we're going to get to that place amen in every service if you were here today we would be receiving the offering and the tithes and I just want you to look at your screen. You will see the three ways that you can give today. And that is by the Secure Give. There's an app that you can download for your phone or iPad. And then you can also go to our website. You will see that in front of you there. The website address. And you see our address here at the church. If you want to mail the offering, the tithe to the church. And you can also come by. And you can just place it in the mailbox if you do that. You don't have to have a stamp on it. You don't have to have an address. All you have to have is your name on an envelope because no one will be receiving that except us. It's a secure mailbox. But we're going to give you the opportunity to give right now. Set, set aside the time and give as unto the Lord. Stand upon the Word of God. If you haven't had faith to, to give and tithes and offer, this is the day for you to stand out taste and see that the Lord is good he will not fail you he will not let you down stand firmly upon this foundation the tithe is a tenth offering is a sacrificial offering that's above that tithe that already belongs to God but let's give right now Lord I pray for each and every one I pray for their finances I thank you for your mercy, Lord. You continue to bless us even though we don't deserve it. And we know, Lord God, that it is you that is under us. Your hands carry us and have us. And I just pray for every family, for everyone, your blessings, Lord, to be upon them, upon their offering, upon their tithes, as they, in obedience to you, as they give. I pray your blessing to be upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give. The musicians are going to be playing for just a little bit. We wait for you. Sing that with me. Yes. We wait for you. Oh, yes. We wait for you. Lord, we wait for you. Oh. To walk in the Thank room. You. Take control of our situations. Put them in your hands.
presence of the Lord so great, so strong. I just know that somebody's going to see a, a miracle in your life. And you're going to receive, amen, of the greatness of God. You know, there's something that the Lord did a while back, and my mind, I, I see it. It just does something for you when you see something visual. And I'm not saying it was anything that I did or whatever, but we seen a storm coming. It was one of those fast-moving storms, and, and uh, it was a clear sky. And then all of a sudden, you know, this storm is out there moving at a fast speed. And I, I pulled out my iPhone and clicked on the radar app, and I seen this big system that was moving toward us, directly toward us. And, and of course, I'm always looking at the colors and the, on the radar because you have the green, and that means that you know it's not really much to it. And then you have yellow, it's more intense. And then you have red, and it's more intense. And then you have a deep, deep red, and that means it's really intense. And then you have the purple, and that means this is bad. And I seen this huge area that was purple, and it was moving, heading directly to us. My wife and I, we just began to pray. And, and it was, I don't know I, if the Lord just did it, maybe for us to see something visual. I, I have no idea. But I've seen that cell split from all of the, the other part, which was huge. And it's kind of split off and it was still heading directly to us. And, and then as it got closer to us, I watched it start disintegrating. And I seen the purple go away and then the red go away. And the yellow go away, and then it was just the green. And by the time it got to us, there was hardly anything to that. And I continue seeing that in my, my vision. I see that in faith. And I, I just, I can't help but just receive that as a sign from the Lord, showing us how things are coming to us. They're heading our direction. They're heading our way, but God's just got a way of disintegrating it just by the time it gets to you 
it's nothing near of what it would have been because of God's divine intervention. And I've seen that today. I just see it in my spirit. I see that in my faith. And hallelujah. There are some of you out there right now, you need to just rejoice and you need to praise God that that which was heading your way has become smaller and smaller and, and it's just disintegrating before it ever gets there because of that covering, because of that boundary line that God has drawn around you. Word of God has many ways of of explaining it sometimes it's speaking as a hedge a hedge that is around us it was a hedge it was around Job and and that that hedge was removed for a short while hallelujah and, and it shows us things in the Word of God but I, I do believe I feel in my spirit today that somebody amen you're not gonna have what was gonna be because God has divinely intervened in that situation in your life and you need to rejoice because of that. You need to just get you a praise and praise God and rejoice because there is a mighty God that he's bigger than all of this other stuff around us and he is watching out for his people and he does hear their cry. He does hear their prayers. Praise God. Amen again. Some of you may have joined in in our live stream since the beginning, since we started. We want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. We ask that you would hit the share button. If you're watching via Facebook, a way that you can share it, share it so it will go beyond our reach and beyond our walls and get on out those further places because there's somebody out there that needs to hear what the Lord is going to say. And they're going to rejoice because the Lord heard their prayer and heard their cry. I want to make some announcements before I open up the Word of God. And that is our goal for the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. This is our goal. Our goal is to begin our first Sunday back on the Sunday after Mother's Day. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. So it will be the following Sunday. That will be the day that we will begin our in-house worship services back. We will still have our live stream as we always do. And I'm going to be coming on live stream sometime in the near future. I do not know when I'm going to do it. I'm going to come in here and we're going to do it with uh, the projector so we can be live streamed through the, uh, I said projector, through the camera. So we can be live streamed through the uh, website, Facebook, and all of the ways that we do live stream. And I'm going to be announcing that opening service. I will be talking about the policies that we're putting in place, that it will be a safe place, a safe church as we come back into worship services and right now, I just want to say this, continue to be extremely safe. Continue to be extremely safe and do everything that you can to protect you, your family, your children in the days that are coming. This virus has not left. It did not come to an end, did not come to a stopping place. And I know it's easy right now to kind of get out and drive around and just feel like, ooh, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're free. And, but be careful. Just be careful because we want all of you and your family and friends to everybody to be safe. And, you know, we even want to go further than that. I don't want anybody to have to go through 14 days of isolation because they come in contact with somebody that found out they had it. I, I just, I, I don't want that to have to happen to anybody, even just that itself. To 14 days, you have to be in isolation away from everybody. I also want to make another announcement, and that is some of y'all have seen me hopping up here to the pulpit on these crutches. I've been doing it for a while now. been doing it so long that I'm, I'm a professional crutch hopper. I've learned how to do everything now. And uh, just I've got me a system down where everything moves pretty easy and getting dressed and taking shower and everything that comes into play when you having to use crutches. And, but thank God I've received a report from my bone doctor 
that my bone is well, and thank God for that, which that's the main reason of the crutches is because of the bone fracture in my tibia that was at the plateau of my tibia. And so, praise God, I'm moving into that just last few days of that three-month period. And so now he has released me into the hands of the doctor that's the sports therapist or the sports doctor that takes care of meniscus and all that kind of stuff. And so Tuesday, I'm going to have my surgery on my meniscus, my knee. So if y'all would just be praying for me as that is being done Tuesday, and it won't be long after that, I will be up and I will be walking. Amen. So just rejoice with me because I'm getting excited about being able to shout and dance and jump and rejoice and amen do all those things that I love to do without being hindered by crutches so just remember me in prayer Tuesday and rejoice with me though because I'm very excited about what the Lord has done and I'm excited about what the Lord is doing and I really feel a touch in my body I have felt the Lord touch me in these days in a, in, in a miraculous way. I really have. I have felt the Lord touching my body, amen, in, in several ways. And I just thank God for that. I believe there is a healer. There is a mighty God that's able to do anything. Yeah. Praise God. Well, if you will turn with me to Esther chapter 4, reading verse 14. Again, thank you for joining with us, worshiping the Lord with us. Please hit the share button. We want everybody to be a recipient of what the Lord has today. Esther chapter 4, I'm reading verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, meaning if you don't do anything at this time, then shall there enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will be destroyed. And who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And I want to preach what the Lord has laid upon my heart for you today. Chosen for such a time as this. Chosen for such a time as this. Will you put your Bibles down and let's just pray together. Amen. Pray for your brothers, your sisters, people all around the world. Amen. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your word. It's alive. It's living. It's active. It is very powerful. We thank you, dear Lord God, for being a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. I thank you for the victories, for the miraculous victories, for the victories that come from the mighty Creator, the mighty God. Lord, as we stand upon your word, as we do things your way, and we use the weapons you give us. I thank you, Lord, for the rejoicing today in the testimonies that is happening in the lives of people and that is going to happen in the name of Jesus. Will you put your hand together with me? Come on, let's just fill our house with praise one more time. Oh, we thank you. This is an atmosphere, Lord, for your word. Oh, bring life, bring life. In Jesus' name, we praise you. Praise God, praise God. You can be seated. Those of you that might have been standing at the reading of the word of the Lord, I'm just going to get to the heart of the message that the Lord has given me today. I'm, I'm going to bypass the building up of a foundation before telling you what the Spirit of the Lord has told me to tell you today. And that's this. You are not here in 2020, in the month of May, in the midst of this craziness, chaos and confusion, the pandemic. You are not in this generation at this time in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic by accident. It wasn't some accident that somehow you, you just, you, you, you're here. This, you just accidentally are here. You are chosen. 
You are chosen for such a time as this. Is this a time where evil is working its great scheme? Absolutely. Is there a hidden agenda that is going on? Absolutely. Is this a time where principalities and powers of darkness are making major steps forward to usher in a one world governed antichrist system? Absolutely. Is this a time where spiritual wickedness is working in high places? Absolutely. Is it a time where there's an evil scheme? Absolutely. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. The Word of God says where sin and evil abounds, grace does much more abound. Meaning God has something bigger than the evil when it increases. God has something greater than the evil when it increases. I am connecting back to a message that I preached. I believe it was last Sunday. I titled it, Do More Than Survive COVID-19. God has a higher purpose. God has a higher purpose for all of us than to just survive what we're going through, than to just survive this pandemic. I'm tying back into that. God created you with something greater than survival for this hour. If God chose you for this hour, if God chose you for this generation, then I'm telling you right now, God has something greater for you than the surviving of pandemic that we are reading and hearing about and experiencing its effects around us. And I want to say this right now. This is what I felt in the Holy Ghost. You can feel it working inside of you. You know there's something inside of you that is rising up. There's something moving in your faith in a greater dimension than what you have experienced before. The Lord has chosen you for a royal purpose. The Lord has chosen you for a royal purpose for such a time as this. Somebody say, I received that. Come on, somebody connect with this right now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. You feel it in your spirit. You feel it in your faith. There's something there stirring. There's something there that is rising to the surface. Just as Queen Esther, she was chosen to be in the place that she was at a certain time for a certain season. She was there for a special purpose. She was there by God for a special purpose. At a time when there was an evil scheme, it was being worked by a man in high up places. His name was Haman. And that scheme was to bring death and destruction to the Jews. There was a purpose behind it. It was so deceptive that the king did not realize the scheme that was being put into place. So I'm just telling you right now, yes, there are a lot of government officials. No, they're they're not wicked and they're not evil. And they're leaders and govern and presidents and everything else. They're, 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 They're there for a purpose and reason and God's put them there where they are. He tells us to pray for our leaders and pray for those government officials. But yes, there is a scheme that is being worked. And that scheme goes beyond their understanding. 
Things that they don't really understand are happening. But, but this, this, this evil man, he was working a scheme and he had tricked the king into signing a petition that anybody that would disobey him would be annihilated knowing that there was a Jew named Mordecai that would not bow in honor Haman. He wouldn't bow to him, even though in his, his official position and all of these things, he, he was not going to bow to this man because he felt that it would go against what he believed and it was wrong. And so we read in Esther chapter 3, and I'm going to read the NIV, New International Version. When Haman saw that Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him honor, he was enraged. Yet having learned who Mordecai's people were, He scorned the idea of just killing Mordecai. Instead, Haman looked for a way to destroy all of Mordecai's people. I want to to just, everything that's connected to him, I want to wipe them. I want to get them involved in this scheme. I want to get them involved. It's more than just a man. Everything that their families and their children. And so I want to destroy all Mordecai's people, the Jews, throughout the whole kingdom of exorcists. Esther chapter 3 verse 8 and Haman said unto king exorcist there is a certain people dispersed and scattered among the people in all the provinces of your kingdom whose customs are different from those of all the other people and they are not obeying the king's laws and it's not in the king's best interest to tolerate them if it pleases the king let a decree be issued to destroy them I will put a lot of money into this I'll put 10,000 talents of silver into the royal treasury of the men who carry out this business so the king took his signet ring from his finger he gave it to Haman and as you read at the end uh, he was an enemy of the Jews which we know that and of course he was given the approval for this to happen and you read in Esther chapter 3 verse 12 dispatches were sent by couriers to all the king's provinces, which the order to destroy and kill and annihilate all the Jews, young and old, women and little children on a single day. Read verse 14, a copy of the text of the edict was to be issued as law in every province made known to the people of every nationality so they would be ready for that day. Let's read now in verse 12, chapter four. And when Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back his answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house that you alone of all the Jews will escape. If you remain silent, if you hold your peace, if you you sit back and you don't rise up, if you remain silent at this time, then relief and deliverance for the Jews is going to arise from some other place. Oh, God's going to do it. And there's going to be people that's going to be used for it. If you just hold your peace and you sit back and say, I'm just going to ride out this, this thing and I'm just going to survive. He said, there's going to be somebody else that's going to rise up because we know God's going to take care of his people. He said, but you, your father's family will perish. And who knows that you have come to a royal place or in your royal position for such a time as this. And Queen Esther She was able to use what God put in her, what God gave her to influence the king to stop this evil scheme that was working from this evil man by the name of Haman and save all of her people and all of the families of the Jews. The Bible lets you know she was in a royal position for a time such as this. Stay with me. Haman's evil ended up being exposed. And it backfired. And Haman had to face hanging at the gallows. Because of this evil scheme that he was working. Thank God that there was somebody that would respond 
with a purpose God had put in them. They were born. She was born for that purpose, to be there, to be in this situation, and to be able to use what God had given her to make a change and save her people and save their families and save their children. I'm saying that to say this. God has chosen you for a royal position. For such a time as this. There is a spiritual warfare that is going on. And it is beyond our understanding. It is beyond the understanding of officials that are out there. It is beyond the understanding of the president and leaders of nations. Uh, There is an evil plot that is in the workings. Uh, There is a scheme uh, that is in the workings. Uh, There is a diabolical plan uh, that is in the workings. Uh, There is a spiritual warfare that is going on right now a plot of deception hallelujah to deceive and to rob us of life and joy and the experiences that we all have just as the military has different divisions of the army the navy air force and the marines thank God for all of our people that have served in this great country for liberty and freedom But they also have special forces, elite teams, just a few names, Green Berets, Navy SEALs. They're special forces. They're special teams of people that just in the small group they are, they make a major change. And we don't even know it. We don't realize what they accomplish in these small groups. And they all have a story. These unique individuals. These men and women that have risen above the stress and the pressures and the things that all the other military people face or go through. These unique individuals, they were born with a unique something inside of them about how things in their past, they have stories and of things of their past and situations, and, and through that they knew that they were called with a higher calling. There was something inside of them. They knew that there is something in them that was it's, it just, it's made to shine under hardship. It rises up and, and they feel it. They've experienced it as they're going through life that whenever there is something that's of a difficulty, that yet there's something inside of them that rises up to the surface. And they were created for these intense moments of pressure. They were created to operate and function and think and, and to, to move and maneuver. And, and, and they, there's something inside of them they know that they're created. They're, they're, they were born for, for this, this, these things that, that are beyond the norm. They are created for intense moments of pressure to function and operate and be able to be used in a powerful way. They were born to exceed the norm. And it causes them, draws them to begin following that, that call, that purpose of which they were created. And just as these elite forces felt something in them that prepared them for these intense special purposes causing them to rise above the norm. I just feel this in the Holy Ghost. I can tell when God speaks to me. God has put something in you. God has put something in you. You are created for more. You are created for more. For such a time 
as this. You were created for such a time as this. You are chosen for such a time as this. No, we're not just surviving. There's something inside that says now it's time to shine. In the middle of the stress that's crippling people's spirits, you feel something rising up inside of you that says it's time to come to the surface. There's something in you uh, to shine under the pressure. There's something in you to shine in the midst of the darkness uh, as it has become more intense. Uh, the darkness has become greater than ever before. But God has called you. He has chosen you. You have been born to rise above the norm. Oh, hallelujah. God has called you to rise above that place of survival. Oh, come on. Will you just worship the Lord? I know. I know. You know what I'm talking about. I know what I feel in my spirit. I know what I feel in the Holy Ghost. I know what I feel when the creator of my life and soul is speaking to me. I've known it through the years he has showed me as he has spoken to me and things have happened. I know somebody today, you know what I'm talking about. You have been created for more than just the norm. You are rising up in the time that God has created you for a time to shine in the midst of the depression a time to rise up in power of God for a purpose for your people for your families for your children oh hallelujah hallelujah praise God we have so many examples throughout the Word of God. I love talking about David because I just, there's some special connection. I always have felt that connection when I read about David. I just, there's something about it. But like this psalmist David, he was chosen for such a time as when he come walking out there in the midst of a time where Goliath was roaring and intimidating the people of God. They were all in their foxholes and they are saying, we're not going to fight him. We're not going to deal with him. We're just going to stay hidden in fear. David was chosen by God. He was born, created by God for this day because God said, that man's got a royal purpose. And he began leading David out to where he happened to come bringing the food to his brothers. And here's this giant Goliath intimidating and roaring against the people of God. David was chosen by God to rise. He was chosen by God to rise into this royal position because of there was an ability. There was something that was put inside of David that God put there. And that is David was called to lead in praise and worship to God. That was what God said, I need. I need a man. I need a man that's got something in the heat of the battle to say, I'm going to put my praise on. I'm going to put my dance on. I'm going to put my shout on. This was King David. This was what God needed. I need a man that knows how to dance and praise me in the heat of the battle where he will rise above everything else. And just like David and just like Esther, you have been chosen for a royal purpose for such a time as this. <laughs> My God, my God, 
you are chosen to go to a greater level than you've ever gone to in your praise and in your worship. How you've been chosen to lead to the spiritual victories, to lead your families, to lead your children, to lead your people, to lead your friends unto the spiritual victories. You have been chosen for a royal place, a royal purpose for such a time as this. What you do it's going to save your family what you do it's going to save your friends what you do it's going to be used by the miracle working God to bring deliverance to your people oh hallelujah come on Hallelujah. I know there's somebody in your home right now. You're saying, that's me. You're rising up saying, that's me. I feel it. It's come to the surface. Hallelujah. I say, put your praise on. Put your praise on. Put your praise on. Just see the power behind what God can do in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the intimidation, in the midst of the demonic deceptions and plots and schemes that are being worked, plans to bind and destroy. But God's got people that their praise will break their chains, will stop those evil plots from working. Hallelujah. You're chosen to a royal position for such a time as this. I know I'm not going to be the same. I know I'm not the same person I was the beginning of this year. I know I am not the same man that I was at the beginning of this year. I know there's something rising up. I know that God said, hey, you were born for a purpose. You were born for a time. You were born for a reason. I know. God. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. You are chosen to show forth praises unto that God that has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous, miraculous, overcoming, powerful light. In the time past, you were not those people. In the time past, but now you are the people of God which had not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. God has chosen you. God has called you to a royal place. A royal place. And that is in that place. There is a power in your praise. In that place of royalty. There is a power inside your praise. That breaks down chains. That stops the powers of hell from working. It destroys their devices and their schemes. You are chosen to the royal position. For such a time as this and there is no higher place than that place where the people of God praise God as they rise in a strength that is within them and they began to praise until walls fall they praise God until the prison doors are broken they praise God until everything else is falling apart these are the Paul and Silas's these are the children of God, the Davids, uh, the Esthers, uh, the people God said, I have birthed you for a purpose. I have birthed you for a reason. Uh, no, you're not the Jew. Uh, hallelujah, you're the Gentile. Uh, you once did not have mercy, but God has given you mercy. Uh, now, show praise. Uh, now it's time in your royal position uh, to praise God. <laughs> hallelujah. 
There's no higher place than praising God. Psalms 149 and 6, I could give you so many scriptures, it would choke your mules and all of your friends' mules. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. I'm a two-edged sword in the hand. Hallelujah. There's nothing higher than this. There's nothing higher than this. The high praises of God and the two-edged sword, which is the word of God, be in their hand. There is no higher purpose on this earth than praising God. The high praises of God, let it be in your mouth. There is nothing more powerful than praising God. There is no higher calling on this earth than praising God. God. There is nothing greater. High praise leads the way to victory. High praise leads the way to victory. Praise is like the weapons of battle, but it's God's weapon of battle. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth and the two-edged sword in your hand. It's not not by might it's not by power it's by my spirit saith the Lord this is how the battle is won this is how the victories are won this is how you save your families and you save your children and you keep them from the evil scheme that's working behind the scenes that's in high places wickedness and rulers and the darkness uh, that stop can't work against you uh, and your children and your family uh, as you take your high praise unto the king of glory <laughs> hallelujah come on God gave you two hands to clap unto the Lord God gave you two feet to leap for joy to run and to dance before the Lord. The reason God gave you a voice is to make a joyful noise and shout unto the Lord. The reason God put breath into your body is to praise the Lord. Psalms 150 and 1. Praise you the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the ferment of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the temporal and the dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud symbols. Praise him upon the high sounding symbols. Let everything that has breath praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God did not create us for the purpose to praise the sports stars. He did not create us to praise the celebrities. He created us to praise Him in His presence, in His glory, to give glory unto God. There is power to praise the true and living God. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with getting excited at a ball game or jumping shouting, clapping, raising your hands, do a little jig. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm saying God created you for more than that. God created you for more than that. He created you for a time as this. He created you right now. 
hallelujah, where you rise up in the power that God has created you for and bring victory to your people and bring victory to your land and bring victory to your nation and bring victory to the people around this world. We are chosen for such a time as this. Hallelujah, rise to that place. Come on, amen, you are the elite. You are that special force. You're going to accomplish more in just a little bit of time than everybody else can accomplish in a lifetime. You are the people that know how to move in the spirit of God. You know how to move when God says move. You know how to function because God puts something in you that does something that other things doesn't move you to. And that is it rises up in a power and in an authority and the mighty God of glory brings victory oh praise God praise God come on lift your voice with me lift your voice with me fill your house with praise right now come on hallelujah 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 oh come on oh hallelujah I know I know I know right now we can say yeah but you know it's not my my nature and all that you know it's my nature this is something that goes beyond all of that this is something God put into people hallelujah when you talk to those elite forces out there I'm telling you you're going to be visiting with people that are socialites and you're going to be visiting with people that are introverts but there's all got something in them every one of them has a purpose and it pulled them all together and they begin to function as one they begin to function as one team every one of them had something deeper that was inside of them than their personalities it made them shine and become a very powerful force. I'm, I'm calling right now in the Holy Ghost I, I'm to the soul I, to awaken and arise. I, this is your hour. This is your hour. You are not here by accident. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you the truth. I cannot wait till this church opens its doors again. I cannot wait what we're going to experience and feel because I know God's rose people up, brought them to a place they've never been before, but know they were created for something greater. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. This is not time for the norm. Oh, woe be unto anybody if we go back to normal stuff. Woe be unto anybody who goes back to the normal church as usual. It's time for more than the mediocre. It's time for more than the I'm just going to fit in mentality. No. You've been called for a reason and a purpose and you're not here by accident. It's time to put your praise on. And rise to a higher call in this pressure and in this stress and in this stuff that's putting depression and discouragement and locking people in chains and causing people to take their lives and all of the stuff that's going on in the midst of it all. Hallelujah. God's got a people. God's got a people. God's got a church. Hallelujah. That's been chosen for this moment. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, musicians. David. The son of Judah, of the tribe of Judah, the Old Testament. Some of you may not be familiar with the Word of God. And you hear the word Judah, one of the 12 tribes of Judah. And perhaps you're watching today, but I, I want you to understand when you read about the tribe of Judah, and of the 12 tribes of Israel, they all had a special position, they all had a special purpose, they all had a special place. And Judah means praise. That's what it means. It was a tribe of praise. They were called the tribe of Judah, the tribe of praise. And it was a tribe of praise that led the way to victory. That was the one that led the way to victory. They were first in line, in rank, in order. The tribe of Judah. They had a banner just like every military force does. Their banner was a lion, and that represented the lion of the tribe of Judah. 
The powerful representation. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the lion of the tribe of praise. Something powerful begins happening when we begin to praise the Lord. Judah was the front line in the battle because nothing was more powerful than the tribe of Judah. Numbers 10 and 14, in the first place, went the standard of the camp of the children of Judah. In the first place, when they would go into battle, when they would move forward to take land that belonged to them. What I'm saying is when you need deliverance, praise has to go first. If you need a miracle, praise has got to go first. Don't wait for the wall to fall. You shout around the wall. Put your praise on. When God says it's time to move, you need to praise God with everything you have. The high praises of God need to be in your mouth and you need to have this sword of the Spirit, the living Word of God in your hands. And you take back what belongs to you. When you're going to the enemy's camp to take back what belongs to you, praise must go first. So many times people that are bound, they're bound in their addictions. They're bound in the things that are destroying their body and holding them captive. They're waiting. Well, once, once I get free, I'm going to be one of them people. I'm going to be one of those kind of people that prays like they do. Why you want to sit back and wait? If you would just get you some praise on. Start praising the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Do what his word says. You'll see those chains start breaking. You'll see those miracles start happening. You'll see deliverance coming into your camp and into your marriage and into your family and into your children. If you'll put your praise on first, let it go first. Let it go first. God says this is how the battle is won. Genesis 4 9, you read that scripture. It simply is telling you this. Praise is a pain in the enemy's neck. Read it for yourself. Praise. Judah means praise. Praise is a pain in your enemy's neck. The weapons we use are not bombs and guns. Worship is the way. The battle is won. Worship is the way that we fight, that we get our victory. Hallelujah. 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 No, we have a tendency to look for the weapons of war. I'm telling you right now, that bow back in the Old Testament, that was a great weapon of war, but it was from the bow that the harp was created. It was from the bow that the harp that David used was made. It was from the bow and the idea with the bow that they said, hey, we can add strings in this and make different sounds. And that's what David mastered. David said, I'm not going to master the bow. I'm going to master the harp. I'm going to master praising God. And David realized this is where the victory is. I can do more with my praise than I can do with the weapons of war. I can do more than my praise than I can with the spear that King Saul has. I can do more with my praise. And he mastered the praise. And David was a mighty warrior for God. And he was used mightily by God. Come on. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching to you right now. Rise up. Master the praise. Master the praise. And see what happens. See. You have been called with this purpose. You have been called for this hour. Now is your day. Now is your day. Shine for the glory of the Lord. Shine for the glory of the Lord. Shine for the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh my God. My God. 
my heart to you. Come on. Come on, I know you feel it. Come on, I know you know it. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for healing our land. Thank you, Lord God, for healing our finances. Thank you, Lord God, for healing our mind. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hey Amen. I encourage you all, wherever you are, in your homes, maybe outside, wherever you are, Continue, continue worship of the Lord. Continue praising God. There are some of you right now, God has done something in your life. And you feel it and you know it. 
If I was you, I would just keep on rejoicing and praising God. I wouldn't just stop right there. Hallelujah. I can show you scriptures of people that stop short. Keep on. Keep on. Don't stop short. Keep on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This concludes our service. Thank you for joining us, worshiping with us here at Atasca Seed of Pentecostal Church. God bless you. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank y'all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you could take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.